This is a visit training on Noah Sims Prob Severe version 2 that is all hazards. It includes a prob wind, a prob hail, and a prob tour. The subject matter experts for this product are listed. Some are from Noah, some are from Sims. I'm Scott Lindstrom from Sims. Prob Severe is a statistical model designed to increase forecast confidence when you're issuing warnings. It's a tool you can use to be a little bit more confident to issue your warning. The statistical model predicts whether or not a storm will produce severe hail, severe wind, or a tornado in the near term, that is within the next 0 to 60 minutes. So this is something that can be used as a pre-polygon product, or you can use it for warning reissuance. Prob hail, prob wind, and prob tor comprise prob severe all hazards. The probabilities are a function of the dynamic and thermodynamic environment, which is defined by models, and also of observations. For example, prob hail includes observations of hail size for the mesh. It includes observations from the satellite, satellite growth rate. Prob wind also includes satellite growth rate. PROBTOR does not include satellite growth rate. What does this look like in AWIPS? PROB HAIL displayed in AWIPS includes a shapefile that is contoured around radar storm cells. The enhancement is designed to be an overlay on top of radar reflectivity, but it can be overlain on any field. The sampling offers a readout of the model probability, as well as each model predictor. Note that the flash rate and flash density in Prob Severe are coming from Earth Network's total lightning. As of 2020, GLM data are not being used in the computation of the probabilities. You can also display at one time Prob Hail, Prob Tor, and Prob Wind. The Prob Hail readout looks something like this. So it includes mesh, flash rate, that's from the Earth Network's total lightning, the normalized vertical growth rate from satellite, quantified as weak, moderate, or strong, or you might see mature storm if the storm has been around for a long time. The bulk shear is included, cape, precipitable water, and the height of the zero C wet bulb. The object ID identifies which radar object is being tracked. Here's the prob wind readout. As you see, it includes mesh, vil density, Earth Network's flash rate, low-level and mid-level azimuthal shear, the normalized vertical growth rate from satellite. Here it's not available. Typically that happens when a cirrus shield gets in the way. The bulk shear, the mean wind is shown, and also the most unstable cape, and the mixed layer cape. Probtor is also shown. Satellite information is not in here. There is no cloud growth rate but we do have azimuthal shear, quantified as weak, moderate, and strong, flash density, storm relative helicity, environmental bulk shear, the mean wind, and the mixed layer cape and the mixed layer sin. Note also that the average beam height is shown. You know at what level the radar object is being displayed. AWIPS can be configured so that AWIPS draws an inner contour with the highest value of prob hail, prob wind, and prob tor. There's a second contour drawn around it, which has the prob tor value. Note that the GLM values are shown as well. For example, flash extent density, total optical energy, and average flash area. These values are not used in the computation of the prob severe values. They're there to help you relate prob severe to GLM observations. A few quick examples. This is a prob hail example from March 5th, 2018. It's in a region of marginal from the SPC outlook. Prob hail initially with this event is fairly small, 3%. A storm is developing near New Braunfels, Texas. There's great shear and large cape in the minus 10 to minus 30 Celsius layer. Two minutes later, the satellite growth rate has increased and mesh has increased, and prob hail has increased to 11%. 14 minutes after that, mesh has continued to increase, and total lightning is also slowly increasing. Two minutes after that, mesh and total lightning are rapidly increasing, and prob hail has jumped up to 63%.
Eight minutes later, ProbHale is up to 92% because of a very large mesh and considerable lightning. Notice that the flash rate is up to 45 flashes per minute. Ten minutes later, ProbHale is up to 95% and a severe thunderstorm warning was issued at this time. The first severe hail report, 1.75 inches, was received from this storm at 2320 UTC. The high values of prob hail in this example should help you be more confident in issuing a warning. Here's a prob wind example. At 252 UTC, prob wind is 21% and there's a line of strong storms pushing into the Louisville WFO. There's very strong shear and strong synoptic low-level winds. Both are favorable for damaging winds. This is at 252 UTC. Prob wind is 21%. 18 minutes later, prob wind is at 37%. The azimuthal shear and reflectivity observations have intensified, causing an increase in prob wind. Two minutes later, because total lightning is increasing, prob wind has also increased to 47%. Two minutes after that, prob wind is up to 54% because of an increase in the azimuthal shear. Ten minutes later, prob wind is up to 73%. Azimuthal shear, reflectivity, and total lightning are all increasing. And two minutes later, a severe thunderstorm warning was issued. Prob wind at this time was 68%. Wind damage reports were received at 356 UTC 30 minutes later. Here's a ProbTor example. ProbTor with this particular cell is initially 10%. The kinematics were very favorable for tornadoes. There are very large values of 0 to 1 km storm relative helicity and large effective shear. Two minutes later, ProbTor has increased to 25% as the MRMS low and mid-level azimuthal shear strengthens. Two minutes after that, ProbTor continues to increase this time because of an increase in the flash density. Note how ProbTor is highlighting this particular region of the line. This is helpful when you're trying to decide which part of this line to interrogate most closely with the radar. Two minutes later, ProbTor is up to 51%. It continues to increase as low-level storm rotation continues to strengthen. 14 minutes later, ProbTor is up to 52%, and a tornado warning was issued at 2307 UTC. At 2330 UTC, ProbTor is up to 79%, and a tornado was reported at this time. Low-level rotation here was very strong. How well do these products do statistically? The chart on the left compares ProbSevere with the National Weather Service Forecaster. Probability of detection false alarm rate, and critical success index are fairly similar for both ProbSevere and National Weather Service. What ProbSevere gives you is better lead time. This is why ProbSevere can be used to increase the confidence you might have in issuing a warning, because ProbSevere's strength is an increase in lead time before the observation of the severe weather. The reliability diagram on the right shows a slight over-forecast bias for most probability thresholds, but ProbSevere is well calibrated overall. The next several slides will compare legacy ProbSevere with the ProbSevere individual all hazards, ProbHail, ProbWind, and ProbTor. ProbHail shows significant improvement over legacy ProbSevere for hail reports. The reliability diagram shows that prob hail is well calibrated and much more well calibrated than prob severe version 1 for hail. Prob wind also shows improvement over legacy prob severe. Probability of detection is higher and the false alarm rate is generally lower. Prob wind reliability is better. Prob wind is a better calibrated product than the legacy Prob Severe product was. Preliminary statistics for Prob Tor are shown here. The chief benefit is better lead time from Prob Tor. And overall, Prob Tor is well calibrated. This figure tells you that the kinematic environment matters. Do not expect the same Prob Tor probability value to give the same results from event to event. Kinematic fields impact ProbTor values. 
In the example on the left, you would sample with your radar more frequently the radar object that has a probtor of 30%. Similarly, on the right, you would sample more frequently the region where the radar object has a probtor of 60%. There are some known caveats from ProbSevere that are shown here. Read through these and make sure you understand them. Maybe the most important one is ProbSevere will not provide lead time to every storm. It's a tool you can use to become more confident that warning issuance is required. You can also use ProbSevere to help determine which radar object is the most likely to be producing severe weather. The lack of a strong ProbSevere signal does not mean that that object will not produce severe weather. ProbSevere will not provide lead time to every storm. ProbTor requires an identifiable object in radar reflectivity especially if you have a QLCS coming toward you. In these linear modes, object identification is very difficult. The absence of an object, and therefore the absence of probtor values, does not mean that there is no tornadic threat. Don't forget what the environmental parameters will be telling you. Some other caveats are listed. Probtor will typically have very low probabilities with landspout tornadoes. ProbSevere is a statistical model that incorporates numerical weather prediction fields, radar observations, total lightning observations, and also in some cases satellite growth observations to predict the probability that a storm will produce severe weather in the next 0 to 60 minutes. Use ProbSevere in combination with existing radar interrogation techniques. It's designed to increase your confidence and increase your lead time as far as warning issuance goes. ProbTor is best used in a relative sense. How a storm's values compare to a neighbor's, since the kinematic environment will impact probabilities in addition to observations, that will help you determine which object should be interrogated most frequently with the radar. GLM is not yet incorporated into ProbSevere, but work continues toward including it. GLM values can be displayed in the sampling, so you can relate ProbSevere values to GLM values. Here are some contacts and references. This concludes this training. Thanks for listening.